Okay, so let's now proceed sa class mark or midpoint. This is obtained by adding the lower and upper limit of each class and dividing it by 2. So, nasa yung lower and upper limit natin? So, we're going to focus dito sa class intervals natin. So, lower limit plus upper limit. So, we're going to have 112 plus 120 divided by 2. So, that will be equal to 116. While on the next class, we'll have 121 plus 129 divided by 2. So, that will be 250 divided by 2. So, that will be equal to 125. Next class, we have 130 plus 138 divided by 2. So, that will be equal to 134. Next class, we have 139 plus 147 divided by 2. So, that will be equal to 143. And the next one, we're going to add 148 plus 156 divided by 2. So, we're going to get 152. Next, we have 157 plus 165 divided by 2. We're going to get 161. And on the last class, we're going to add 166 and 174 dividing it by 2. We're going to get 170. So, dito naman sa class mark for you to check if your class marks are correct. So, kailangan Lahat na makukuha nyo per class is just between nitong um, lower and upper limit. So, kaya nga siya ay midpoint. So, it should be the midpoint of the class interval. And, um, there will be times na magkakaroon ng 0.5 yung class mark ninyo. So, if that's the case, you're not going to round off yung class mark. So, just write it as it is. Next is the class boundary. So, dito naman sa class boundary, we're going to focus on the class interval. So, class boundary is made up of the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary. So, sa lower class boundary, we're going to focus on the lower limit and we're going to subtract 0 0.5. While sa upper class boundary, we're going to focus on the upper limit and then we will add 0. 0.5. Five. So, let's try sa first class. So, lower class boundary niya. So, focus tayo sa 112. Then, subtract lang ng 0.5. So, that will be 111.5. And then, for the upper class boundary, focus tayo sa upper limit. So, that will be 120 plus 0.5. So, that's why we'll have 120.5. Next one, we'll have 121. So, ito, minus 0.5. So, that will be 120.5. And then, for the upper class boundary of this class, so 129 plus 0.5. So, that's why we will have 129.5. Next naman, 130 minus 0.5. So, that's why we have 129.5. And then, 138 plus 0 0.5, 138.5. Let's proceed in the next class, 139 minus 0 0.5, 138.5. And then, uh, sa upper class boundary naman niya, we have 147 plus 0 0.5. So, that's why we'll have 147.5. Next, next class, 148 plus, I minus 0 0.5, sorry. So, that will be 147.5. And then, 156 plus 0.5, so we'll have 156.5. On the next class, subtract naman ulit tayo ng 0.5 sa lower limit. So, that will be equal to 156.5. And then, add 0.5 sa upper limit, which will be equal to 165.5. And then, sa last class natin, we'll have 166 minus 0.5, 165.5. And sa upper class boundary, we'll have... 174 plus 0.5, so we'll have 174.5. So, that's it for class bounded. So, next one is the relative frequency column. So, in here, we're going to focus on the frequency column. And um, relative frequency is obtained by dividing the frequency of each class by 
n or yung total ng frequency natin and then multiplying it by 100. So, let's find the relative frequency of the first class. So, we have, we'll have 2 divided by, we'll have 2 as the frequency of the first class divided by 50 for the, or the total number of students or yung total na frequency natin and then times 100. So, if you're going to calculate it, you're going to get 4. Well, sa second class naman, we'll have 7 divide 50 times 100, you're going to get 14. While um, sa third class naman natin, we'll have 10 divided by 50 times 100, so you'll get 20. Sa fourth class natin, we'll have 12 divide 50 times 100, so you'll get 24. Next, sa... 5th class natin, so we'll have 11 divided by 50 times 100, you're going to get 22. Next, sa 6th um, class natin, we have 5 divide 50 times 100, you're going to have 10. And lastly, 3 divided by 50 times 10 times 100, I mean, so you're going to get 6. So, dito sa relative frequency, see to it that when you get the total of these numbers, it will be equal to 100. Next column is the cumulative frequency column. So, this is divided into 2. Into two the less than cumulative frequency and the greater than cumulative frequency. So, we're going to focus again on the frequency column. Okay, so to start off, dito muna tayo sa um, less than cumulative frequency. So, first thing to do, to do is to copy the frequency nung class na yun. So, in this case, we have 2. And then, for you to know the next, just add the next frequency. So, 2 plus 7, you're going to get 9. And then, 9 plus the next frequency, which is 10, you're going to get 19. Plus 12, 31 plus 11, 42 plus 5, 47, and plus 3, you're going to have 50. And for you to check kung tama ba yung nasa less than cumulative frequency column mo, make sure na yung last number na makukuha mo ay equal dun sa total ng frequency natin. So, yung huli, huli nating number na nakuha is 50. So, and 50 then yung total ng frequency natin. So, we can say that uh, tama yung answer natin. While, dito naman sa greater than cumulative frequency, ganun din yung process. Yun nga lang, ang work natin ay upward. So, we're going to start from the bottom or from the last class. So, again, pag magsistart tayo, we're going to copy the frequency, which is 3, and then add the next. So, 3 plus 5, 8 plus 11... 19 plus 12, 31 plus 10, 41 plus 7, 48, and plus 2, 50. So, again, to check, the last number that you're going to get should be equal dun sa total ng frequency, which is also 50. And that's it. So, this is the frequency distribution table of the uh, given set of data. Okay, um, I want you to try this example. So, you're going to construct a frequency distribution table based on the data below. So, the advanced algebra class of Ms. De La Cruz took an achievement test. Took an achievement test. The results are shown below. So, you're going to make a frequency distribution table out of this given data. And we're going to check it on our next um, synchronous meeting. Thank you guys for listening and we hope that you learned.